one of the fun summer projects I've been doing with the children in my charge is to make flower blossom jam. You'll see this referred to online in recipes as either vegan honey or dandelion jelly or sometimes clover jelly, but truly you can make it with any edible wildflower blossom or a combination of many. We did mostly clover because that was what was available to forage, but we picked a few dandelion blooms for color. The first step is to make flower blossom tea, or since this isn't actually made from the leaves of the Camellia sinensis plant, and so not actually tea, we learned that the term for what we had made is a flower blossom tisane, or infusion. To do this, you simply put your blossoms in a pot with an equal volume of water, bring the whole thing to a boil, and then keep it at a rolling boil for 20 minutes. After that, turn off the heat and allow the blossoms to infuse for an additional two hours or more. We chose overnight. Psst. This makes a great way to teach inequalities because overnight is greater than two hours. So now it's the next day. Time to decide whether we wanted to make jam, jelly, or preserves. We investigated the store-bought jellies in the fridge and noticed that none were actually called jelly. They were either jam or preserves. Well, what's the difference? To the research! We learned that a jelly is made from the strained juice of a plant. A jam is made from a homogeneous mixture of the plant, which is achieved by blending, and preserves are a non-homogeneous mixture. After much debate and learning the word homogeneous, we decided we wanted a homogeneous mixture of flower blossoms. So out came the blender. After that, we returned the mixture to a boil and added an equal volume of sugar to the volume of flower blossoms or the volume of water used, stirring all the while. Well, we were supposed to. We were a cup of sugar short and so had to switch to the low sugar pectin instead of the regular sugar pectin pictured in our materials list. Don't worry, the jam tasted delicious even so. So cool, making flowers into jam. While we were doing this, we had our jars warming in the oven so that they wouldn't crack on contact with the hot jam. To do this, you put the jars in the oven when everything is cold and then let them stay in the oven during the entire preheat cycle until it comes to temperature. Leave them in the oven until they are ready for use. Once the sugared flower blossom mixture was at a boil, we added our pectin and a cup of lemon juice and stirred it in well. Then, following the instructions found in the box, we allowed the concoction to boil for an additional one minute before turning off the heat. At this point, we carefully removed our hot jars from the oven and with lots of adult help and supervision, poured the very splashy jam into them, making sure to leave an inch of space at the top of the jars as headroom. Then, because of the nature of the jam we were canning and the fact that we knew it wouldn't last the month because we'd eat it sooner than that, we hot packed our jars which simply means that we turn them upside down and let them cool as is. There are many ways to can, and hot packing is not appropriate for all food storage, but it was safe to do here and now and for this. And two days later, because the pectin needs time to set up so we had to patiently wait our two days, we had spreadable jam for peanut butter and flower blossom jam sandwiches. Jam we made. Awesome! How'd it taste? Awesome! It tastes like flour, it tastes like honey. Tastes like honey. Well, that's exactly what it was supposed to taste like. Thumbs up for jam?